Hi, Brianna. Hi. It's just the two of us, or maybe the three of us briefly, huh? How are we doing? I'm looking for a prop I used with my nephew, but I can't find it. <laughs> hey, how you doing, pal? You ready? Hi. Hi, what's your name? L-A-M-D-O-N, can I sound it out? What? Landon. Landon. Oh, Brandon. Oh, Brandon, that's a good name. <laughs> and how old are you, Brandon? <laughs> Landon, with an L. Oh, Landon, like Alf Landon. You ever hear Alf Landon? <laughs> How old are you, sweetie? I'm five. Do you go to school? Yeah. Yep, we just finished. <laughs> what what grade are you in? I'm uh, not even in a grade. I'm 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 in kindergarten, not even first grade or any grade. Kindergarten? Can I can I tell you how good I was in kindergarten, Landon? Okay. I was so good in kindergarten that the nuns kept me there for two years. Did you know that? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, real quick, and then we'll get rid of Landon, okay? Bye -bye. Okay, okay another intro I must cut. Hey, yeah. I'd like to, <clears throat> Brianna, you're in the 230 class, right? Yes. Could you, let me ask you if you can do something. I want to experiment here. I'm going to give you um, access to sharing the screen, okay? And <clears throat> could you go into the pipeline and... Uh, this thing's giving me a hard time again. It's giving, it's giving me that stupid white glove instead of a cursor. I'm on an iPad. Okay. I don't, I don't know if I know how to do these things. <laughs> okay. Well, don't worry about it then. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure how many people we have here. How about we go through a practice test? Do, we haven't done that yet, right? Uh, we did that on... Um, oh, you were, there, you were there on Tuesday, huh? Yeah. Okay. Well, let me say, let me ask this way. What, anything particular you want to go over in the course? I have another test we can look at too right now, but. Um, I do kind of have a question, a general question. And then I, I don't know. I took the practice midterm yesterday. Okay. I don't know if you know what, or if I told you a question, um, if you would have it near you to look at it, or I would be glad I to. I'd be glad to. I the you have to, you have to pull up the test yourself. As a teacher, I can't get access to that test. So yeah, maybe you could just ask me the question then, right? Well, so I'm trying to remember what question it was. Oh no, there it is. Okay, it says Lance Company was pro er, has provided the following information, and it has cash sales total, credit sales total, mm -hmm. cash um, collections from. Oh, I think I didn't take a picture of the whole thing. Well, what are they asking for? Okay, it says, what is the amount of Lance's income from operations? Okay, so and how do we I, get that? That's revenue uh, less expenses, right? Right, so I took cash sales total and added it to credit sales total. Correct. And that was my revenue. And then I tried to add up all the expenses. Okay, I'm just saying what expenses did you try to, read what you tried to call an expense. Okay, I added... There was it. You ignore that sentence about collecting the cash, right? Yes. So I did anything that said interest expense, supplies expense, rent expense, wages expense, other operating expense. And tell me again, what read again what they were asking for. What income? Just amount of income from operations, but instead of instead of taking away the Interest expense, they took away a $22,000 loss from a sale of property. Yeah. Okay. Let, let, me, let me explain that. The interest expense is, uh, of course, not an operating expense. That's um, That comes after operating income. 
operating income or sales minus operating expenses, operating income. The okay. sale on the, the loss on the sale of a fixed asset is now considered an operating expense. That's, that's a rule that changed about 10, 12 years ago. Okay. So that would be probably why you got that one wrong because you did not include that. Yeah, I, yeah, I confuse that. So I wouldn't use I, interest because it's not. I guess I was getting operating and just income, just net and income mix up. Is that what I did? Yeah, yeah, and that that question's a little bit unfair because it kind of is really more from chapter six, which we haven't really seen yet. But yeah, sales. What you're going to learn in chapter six soon is sales minus. Um, Operating expense, expenses equal operating income, then you subtract interest, interest income if there's any. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll look over that one, that make that. Okay, what else you got there? Um, I'm having a bit trouble with uh, accrued, I guess. Okay. And I think, and I've been trying to play it in my head a thousand times and I think I finally get it, but I kind of wanted to reiterate it and see if it makes sense. and to you and then if that's the correct way. Okay, so now I have something to share and maybe this will help that part of your, our talk here, okay? Okay. Okay, <clears throat> here's a, a slide on um, adjusting journal entries. So tell me, your, tell me the question you have on uh, accruals, right? Yeah, so I think is because I'm looking at the deferred and I get the deferred um, either way, but when accrued and what I think I just realized is that because in deferred revenue deferred expense you're going in and you're changing something that was already entered. But in accrued it's not actually entered yet so you're right, are you writing the first entry when you do an accrued. Yeah, that's that, yeah that's that's a good point that's a real good point yeah an, accru not an accrual is, is the recording of an expense that has not been obviously entered yet, nor do you even know the amount necessarily. You don't have a bill. You know it's an ex you know that something happened in this fiscal month that you need to record. Okay. Okay. So you're not really adjusting anything. I mean, in a sense that there's nothing written yet. You're just adding kind of an entry. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I understand where you're going there. Think of, think of it this way, during the month, it's the end of the month now, and you see on your, your trial balance, you have no electricity expense, right? Yeah. Well, you know, you consumed electricity and you must record that expense. Mm -hmm. And you know, at the end of the month, you owe the payment for that electricity. You just don't know what it is yet. Right. So you come up with a number and you debit the expense and credit um, and accrued uh, payable account. Right. So you set up that that's your, your, you know, journal entry, but then when you do pay it, then you go back. So it, for an accrued expense, um, you, you would adjust that when you pay it and take away the payable and then deduct cash or credit. Uh, I'm going to say yes with, with uh, a caveat. There's a little more to it. You don't need to know yet. It would just confuse things. But yes, oh. yeah, you're going to relieve the liability when you make the payment. Oh. Do you want to look at the example we have here, Brianna? Oh, I can try, yeah. I get, Hi, Justin. Get anxiety. <laughs> How's it going? Good, good. Dumb question, Justin. You're in uh, the 230 group, right? Yeah, the eight-week financial. Okay, so you and Brianna are in, this, in the same class here. Um, uh, we were just going over adjusting entries. Um, here's an example of an accrual right here. Salaries earned since the last payday, but unpaid. We understand this, everybody. This is the work you did from the 25th of the month through the 31st. When did you do the work? December. When are you going to get paid, Brianna? Probably not for two more weeks, right? But that expense belongs in December. So we have to record, we must record. Oh, look at this, they're already done for us. We have to record the accrual. And can you see it here, number four? Debit salaries expense, credit 
salaries payable. That really should say accrued salaries payable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at the T accounts. Oh. Maybe this will help. You already had 123,000 of salaries recorded. Those are the salaries that you have already paid the people. Okay. That was the work done through the 24th of the month. Now you're accruing the additional 5,000, which means that the total expense for the month is now correct, $128,000, and you owe $5,000 right now. Yeah. That help a little bit, Brianna? Yeah, I think it was just, I was confused because like I was going through deferred, I'm like, okay, well, this is how it originally goes in and this is how it's changed with the adjustment and with the accrued ones, I was like, I don't know what I'm changing. So it's just that there's nothing in there because money hasn't exchanged hands. So there's- Yeah, no nobody's ever uh, expressed it that way to me, but that makes a lot of sense, yeah. Yeah, the accrual, you're just starting right out with the entry. You're not yeah. looking at anything else that you've already done. Yeah. What's the, in the deferrals, in the deferrals, it's the service that's deferred, either the revenue or the expense. Okay. What else you got there? Anything you'd like to look at, Justin? Yeah, I'm kind of trying to flip through Canvas and kind of trying to limit it down. I think my biggest thing is just the repetition of turning the the sentences into the actual accounts. Like the terminology is not really the issue. Okay. It's just a matter of reading something yeah. and like not paying. Like my, yeah. I always like during the exercises and stuff, I, my biggest mistake is always having debits and credits and credits and debits, like very simple. Well, yeah, little. that's, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's the part nobody can really teach other than telling you, just do a bunch exactly. of them until, you know, eventually that has to be as easy to, easy to remember as your name. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Did I ever tell you guys the joke about the fellow who worked 60 years in accounting and he retired? Uh, I don't think so. I worked in accounting for 60 years and he retired. And every day for 60 years, he came into work, opened up a little drawer in his desk with a key. And he pulled out a paper, like a post-it note, and he looked at it for a few seconds. And he put it back when he retired. They were curious to see what he looked at on what it said on the note. You know what it said? Debits on the left, credits on the right. So hopefully it doesn't <laughs> take you 60 years to uh, figure that out, okay? Hope not. We got a couple more weeks. Okay. What you got, Brianna? That was it. There was one other question, I think, on the midterm practice, but oh, that's too much to. <laughs> no, no, no. If you read, if you start reading it, I, I might be able to jump right in there and help you. Mm. Start by start by reading the first sentence or so, and then I may ask you to tell me what they're looking for. Okay, I I'll read it, and then if you can just go over it so I can hear the process. Um, it says, on December 31st, 2019, Krung Company prepared adjusting entries that included the following. So you have your depreciation expense of 31000 Okay, and what are they asking for? Um, he reported his total assets as 390000 prior to the adjusting entries. How much are his total assets after the adjusting entries? Okay, so you write $390,000 down on a piece of paper or something, right? Okay, so go back and start reading the, go ahead, is there more they're asking for? Yeah, so you have your depreciation expense of 31,000. Okay, is that going to increase or decrease the income reported so far? Decrease. Right, that's an expense. Okay, and then we have accrued sales revenue of 29. So, so what's I, that? I, that's a plus. Yeah. And then it says accrued expenses, 12 grand. Hold on just one second here. Mm -hmm. You said they're looking for total assets? Yeah. Okay, let me let me start again. So with 390, what was the first one? 
Depreciation expense. Okay. Since we're talking about assets, that's a reduction in the asset. I was doing income for the first. <laughs> yeah. Why is that a reduction in, in, in assets? For me, I don't know. I, I had a hard time picking out which I was supposed to deduct and add and what not to. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's your question. That's what, yeah, that's what you're trying to help, help us with. Yeah. Okay. okay. When you record depreciation expense, you debit depreciation expense and you credit accumulated depreciation, which is an asset account. Okay. Yeah. So that reduces your assets. And what was the next one? You accrued some... Uh, Sales revenue. Okay, so, so you accrued revenue. That's going to increase your assets because you really got cash or uh, debited cash or accounts receivable, right? But not necessarily when we did the revenue, right? No, no, you're saying they accrued the revenue. Oh, okay, yep, okay. And then, so accrued expenses, they didn't include in the equation. So because it's... See, that's why, because I'm confused with accrued. <laughs> accrued expenses would not have any real balance sheet effect. So I think you're right on that one. Ignore that one. Okay. And then unused insurance um, is an asset that's prepaid, right? Unused insurance. Mm -hmm. What are they saying about unused insurance? It says unused insurance, nine grand. The insurance was initially recorded oh, as prepaid. Oh, so they used the nine, so thousand, so then it's I'm assuming, yeah, I'm assuming they mean that they used it. So that would yeah. reduce your yeah. asset. Yeah, by 9,000. Okay. And then it says rent revenue earned 7,000. The rent was initially prepaid by the tenant and credited to unearned revenue. And that's not included. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good one. Because as you know, they debited cash and they credited the unearned revenue, which is a liability. And now they're reversing the liability and recording revenue. So no asset involved. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's seeing the before and the after. Okay. That All makes right. sense. Sounds good. Uh, you got something for me, Justin? No, I was just kind of following along with that. I okay. If uh, what, what I, that. what, what I'd like, to, we went, we went through a test Tuesday, right, Justin? Yeah. I have another test here. Let's. I don't, I don't know if we want to go through that. Yeah, let's let's try that and see see how that goes. Brianna, I'm going to take pick, go through another test. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm going to um, take my video down so I can eat lunch. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to make sure I got the right one. I'm not. Give me one moment just to get to the bottom of things. Okay, this is definitely a different test. Of course, a lot of the questions are going to sound similar at times. Okay, definitely a different test because I was using fat racks, fat racks factory, and there was no fat racks. Okay, all right. I guess I should just do control home, huh? All right. I will have a little competition here, okay? <laughs> when a company issues common stock to the public, what is the impact on revenues and expenses? You want to tackle that one, Justin? Uh, you issued common stock. So what is the impact on revenues and expenses? What's your, what's your three-line journal entry when you issue stock to the public? Would it, would it not affect revenues and expenses? Isn't that? It has no effect. That is correct. Because your entry is a debit to cash, right? Mm -hmm. debit to cash, credit the par value of the stock and credit 
the paid in capital, okay? Right, Brianna's, Brianna's hiding behind her uh, sandwich. So I'll hit Justin for a few more. The matching principle, when we talk matching, what are we matching? Revenues and expenses. Yeah. And I, I and again, I did not make up the test, but I, I imagine that question will be there in one form or another. What's not a current asset here? Uh, accounts receivable. Oh no, accounts receivable is, is absolutely a current asset because you hope to get paid. <laughs> Intangible yeah. assets. Yeah, yeah. Inta yeah, intangible assets. We're not going to learn about intangible assets for about uh, three more chapters, but that you could have got, Justin, by process of elimination, you know? Well, I made the assumption that accounts receivable wouldn't be current because it's technically, I mean, you don't technically have it, so it wouldn't be current, but I guess. Well, let's understand what we mean by a current asset. A current asset is that asset which we expect to cash in, let's say, within a year. Oh, okay. An asset that we plan to use within a year. So that, that's important, understanding the, the current assets. An intangible asset is a, is a long-term thing. That's, that's something we're, we're not even close to yet. Patents and trademarks. All right, Brianna. Yes. Justin has jumped ahead here. You see number four, Brianna? Yes. Mm, Which oh, is no. not part of equity. Uh, Long-term liabilities. Yeah, that's a nice, easy one, huh? That's a layup, as we say, when I used to play for the Lakers. All right, Brianna, can you give it a little thought two. here? Number five, two. Yep, you have to have one debit, one credit. They don't call it double entry accounting for nothing. All right. And Brianna, I'll give you number six. Yeah, yeah. what is a retainer? <laughs> a retainer is a payment in advance to a lawyer. Oh, okay. You go to a lawyer and you say you want to do, you want, it, you want a lawyer to uh, find out who your husband's been cheating with, okay? <laughs> and you and you get and you give the lawyer the money on July thirty first. It's unearned revenue to the lawyer, is what we're saying. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what it is. It's simply you know, I'm kind of giving you the answer there. Oh, unearned is that B? Yeah, B. Okay, you ready to try a couple, Justin? Yeah. Well, you can work on this. Okay. Remember we were doing a couple like this the other day? Mm -hmm. Here, the only way to do this is grab a sheet of paper and they're giving you stuff year-end. Year-end should not be one word. I don't like that. They're asking for the total, the total, the total stockholders equity. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is share a different screen for just a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see the uh, Excel file here? No, I still see the test. Oh, okay. Okay, you see it now? Yeah. Okay, what I'm gonna do real quick, on these kinds of problems, when they're, asked, when they're giving you a bunch of equity stuff, you know, start with common stock, paid in capital, retained earnings, okay? And then over here, you could put the beginning. All right, so we can go back. So by setting this up, you put your beginning balances in, and what changes equity? Excuse me. Oh, uh, you, <laughs> what changes equity? Well, an additional investment, maybe. Certainly net income, right? And I'm hoping you're writing this down. Uh, I, I would suggest you write it down because it's helpful. Okay? So if you have that template written in front of you right now, 
common stock, paid and capital retained earnings, beginning, in, et cetera. Then we can go back to the problem. Go back to the problem. And start off. So retained earnings was 300, common stock 60, additional paid in capital. You add those two numbers together, it's 310. You started off with 610 to begin with. The net income was 48, you add that to the proper column. The company also declared a dividend, subtract that from the proper column. And they also issued more shares for 24,000. So that seems like a fairly easy one, right? See if I can do it in my head. 300 plus uh, 360 plus 250, 610 plus 48 is 658 minus 20 is 638, right? I got myself confused, 638 plus 24, 32, Your answer is B, 662. Now, taking a test, you know, doing it in your head, I don't think is too good an idea. <laughs> Any questions on that, Brianna? Well, uh, I don't think so. I'm just looking at my numbers compared. Okay. All right. When do we record a sale, Brianna? Um, we record a sale when, okay, when goods are shipped. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me mark that in yellow. Mark it in yellow. Hey, Justin, did you take the practice test? Sorry, what? Did you take the practice test yet? I have not, no. Okay. I'm doing that tonight. Okay. As we go through this, I may ask you to maybe share it for a moment, okay? If we can get into it. All right, here we go. Justin, you want to try this one? Uh, yeah. Five thousand. See? Yeah, that's pretty easy, right? We had two to begin. We bought five or six more. Yeah. This is one of your deferred entries. Deferred. Oh, we do have a fat rex here. Okay. What is the amount of depreciation expense, Justin, to record for 2017? Uh, bought a machine for 60. They bought it on September 1st. Or no, I'm sorry. They bought it, let's say, October 1st, Billy, September 30th. So what's the annual depreciation? Six thousand. Yeah. So it's five hundred a month in last day September, October, November, December. C fifteen hundred. Yeah, there you go. Make sure you look for that, Brianna, on the test. Be careful when be, care, be careful to observe when they bought something. Yeah. What did that one say? The end of up? Number ten? Machine was delivered. Okay. They, yeah, they okay. bought the machine. They're going to start depreciating it October 1st, right? Yep, October, November, December. Yeah. So, November. like, Justin did it exactly right. You figured out it's 6000 a year depreciation or 500 a month. So, in 17, it would be five times three. And then, and then in the year 2027, the last year, it would be nine months worth of depreciation. This is a good one. I know we had a question similar to this. Which of these do we not close at month end? This one should be super easy because we know the two things we do close, right? Expenses and revenues. Which is not closed? Depreciation. Because what do we close? We close revenues and expenses I have to walk away for a second from my kids. Okay. All right. You ready? We're going to try number 12, um, Justin? Yeah, I'm done. 
Yeah, th this one's not really fair. We have we talked about gross profit yet? I don't even think we have really, have we? Oh, I don't think so. They're asking for gross okay. profit. I don't think we've even talked about that yet in this course. Um, just to let Ooh. you know, gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sold. So the answer would be two hundred. Uh, minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. Yeah, when we get to chapter six, then we're going to be looking at that. I don't that one. That question is a little unfair. Hey, here's a good one. You want to take a crack at this one, Justin? They're asking for the total liabilities after the note payment and adjusting entries, huh? So what I would yeah. do is I'd grab a sheet of paper and. And how would you organize this one, Justin? Uh, well, you I, could do we, all of them individually, but I kind of, as I'd read it, I would add, I mean, the first yeah, four exactly. are Talk. liabilities. Keep going. Salary to the last week of the month. So that's also a liability, right? So it would add to that. The note payable is a liability and the run revenue is a liability, right? Yeah, and then half of it, so minus 20,000. So minus 45. Right. So we have 198 minus 45,000. And it's not an option. Okay. Um, you, you, okay well, I got 153. Okay. Well, let's see here. 50, right? Accounts payables 50, 150 for notes payable. Mm -hmm. Unearned revenue was 40. So what's that? $190,000 plus eight for the accrual. We got that, right? 198. 198 yeah. minus 25 gets us down to 173. Is that what you got? Yeah, I got down to 173. And then you take off 20,000 for half of the unearned revenue being earned. Which would put us at one hundred and fifty-three thousand. Which is yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna change that. Perfect. My yeah, problem is going crazy. Yeah, my problem, guys, is I make up tests. Uh, I like making up tests, different tests every semester, and sometimes I don't go back and clean up the dogs. But <laughs> I'm not that worried about the right number. Actually, um, the way you uh, uh, analyze it is the way to go, Justin. That was good. Perfect. Okay. Brianna, are you there? Brianna, Brianna wants no part of this question. <laughs> All right, Justin, how, how did we talk about doing this one? Uh, set it all up. So I'd, I'd do 250 equals 70, which is 180. Off Perfect. Of, so Keep going, man. Equity must be 180. Assets decrease by 80. And liabilities decrease by 15. Then we have 170 equals 55 plus 180, which can be the case. 115. So it decreased by 65,000. Yep. Let's see. Yep. And I, I recommend you do it that way. Um, you know, when you see an asset go down, then you can surmise that the equity went down. And if a liability goes up, you can surmise the equity went down. But that's the way you did it's the only way to really look at it because there are a few exceptions. Mm -hmm. Can I answer this one? Yeah. What are the three see? categories of cash flows? Operating, investing, financing, right? Yes. Uh, oops. Operating, investing, financing. Operating is Coca-Cola, making soda, selling soda. Investing would be a big fixed asset where you bought stock in another company. Financing is simply raising money. Here's a good one. You want to try this one, Justin? Yeah. Is it just 375 minus 79? I don't think so. I think you got to go do the opposite. 
would it, would you add it? You would add the retained earnings to the dividends declared. Yeah. Or the, did, can I ask you? Can I ask you to write something real quick on your paper there? Yes. Write beginning retained earnings and make that zero. Yeah. The line below. The line below that would be, um, yeah, I'm, I'm making it too hard. Beginning, beginning say is zero. Your dividends declared was 79. So your retained earnings still went up 375 despite paying 79 in dividends. So you would add those two numbers together. Okay. Yeah, maybe a better way for me to explain it is put, let's just put some, our own numbers in there. Beginning was 100 and net income was 1,000 and the dividends were 300 and you come to an ending. Retained earnings went up by less than the income, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the point on that question, I think, is, is setting it up in a nice orderly grid. Debit credit means left and right, left and right. Are you with us, Brianna? She's got some kids to look at. Okay, Justin, what do we got here? What's the impact on the statements when a company borrows money? Liabilities increase, 20,000. Oh yeah, yeah. I think so. Yep, you debit cash and you credit a notes payable. Notes payable, that's a borrowing payable. Who's responsible for the management of a company's financial statements? Management. Exactly right. Boy, the good old days are over. I'm reading a book right now about the uh, history of the railroad uh, industry in this country uh, when it really started rolling after the Civil War. And boy, did those guys put out phony statements to raise money. It was unbelievable. <laughs> current assets, current liabilities. In what order are they in what order are they listed? Liquidity. Liquidity, exactly. Cash is liquid. What's the nearest thing to liquidity? Well, someone who's going to pay you in 30 days, your inventory is going to be chewed up in 30 days and your prepaid, huh? Okay, I'm back. Sorry. All right. You ready? Let's see. Uh, sure. Current assets. They're listed by liquidity, right, Brianna? Current assets, correct. Management's responsible? Uh, you don't have to go backward. Uh, yes, the management is responsible. Okay. You ready to continue? Um, All right, yeah. Brianna. Sarbanes-Oxley, what, what was the issue that caused this law to be enacted? Fraud. Fraud. Counting fraud. Are you? Are either of you familiar with Enron? Um, I recall it happening, but I didn't know then what it was. Yeah, I mean, you don't have time to do it now. You're studying, it. but just Google Enron fraud and listen. And you can listen to the people talking. They, you know, they captured conversations. They that, I think they made that movie playing with Dick and Jane or something. It's kind of. I, no, I, I'm not sure about that, but no, uh, <laughs> you could be right. Which financial statement would you consult to determine whether you're going to pay your bills on time? Would the income statement tell you that? No. Not really. The answer would be the one that's got the word cash in it. Okay. You, well, let me say all this. Let me let me change that. Uh, this is balance too, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. There, uh, now that I really look at the question a little more clearly, when they when they're talking about paying all, oh, that's all liabilities due in thirty days. No, it would have to be the cash flow statement. It wouldn't be the oh. balance sheet. Yeah, I guess it's the balance sheet. Who made this question up, Brianna? Well, I don't know. I, I did. <laughs> There we go. One of the two of you work on this here. 
Brianna, while you were gone, I suggested yeah. writing the equity statement down, okay? Beginning, and here they're just looking for retained earnings. So beginning rate retained earnings plus what? And minus what? Uh, plus net minus dividends. Yeah, so why don't you take all this information and see, tell me what the beginning was. Oh, wait. Oh, what was the beginning? I did that one backwards. <laughs> I always read wrong. Who's got an answer for yeah. me? Okay, is it 85? What did you get, Justin? I also got 85. Yeah. Now, you see how that easy was just putting it into that little template, template, template. Mm -hmm. All well, right, Justin, what order do we do to financial statements? Ooh. Uh, and you really have to know the, this. Income statement, balance sheet, statement of equity. Is that right, Brianna? Uh, income statement, statement of equity, balance sheet. Yeah. And let, let me talk about that. Yeah, if there's yeah. a little confusion here, Justin, the reason mm -hmm. you have to do the income statement first is you can't do the equity statement until you get the income. Like yeah. in problem 23, the month ends and you had so much in retained earnings. You have to get the income in order to get the equity. And you can't do the balance sheet until you get the new equity number. So that, that's, that's an important thing to uh, track for the test. Mott forgot to accrue salaries and wages. What do you think, Brianna? What happened here? They uh, failed to record an expense, right? Yeah, so um, liabilities are because you didn't do the liabilities, so they're understated? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good yeah. I think this is a good question to discuss briefly. Yeah. They did not accrue salaries and wages and what would, what would the journal entry be what are we going to debit and credit brianna uh so what would you if you actually accrued them yeah so you would be doing payable okay there's payable and there's expenses so you are debiting expense and you're crediting a payable yeah that's that's exactly right now the reason i asked that justin brianna when, if you get confused on one of these problems where they say they failed to do something, write the correct journal entry quickly on a piece of scrap paper right. and then look at it. <laughs> they, in this case, you would have seen your debit expense, credit liabilities, and then you say, what if they didn't do it? Then you'd be able to clear it up a little bit easier. Just an idea, just throwing these things out there. Hey, Justin, unearned revenue, what's that all about? It is a liability. Yep, that's the, the retainer. The lawyer got the payment in advance. Dodgers got season ticket money. Magazines have a lot of unearned revenue, which I find interesting. Huh? Which of these is a current asset? Prepaid insurance expense. Yeah, boy, that's a super easy one. huh? I put expenses, expense. Current asset, prepaid insurance is correct. Come on. Even though you add the... <laughs> What's that? Nothing. Okay. Let me answer this one because it's so, because it's very poorly worded. These guys um, had nothing to begin, I guess. They ordered $1,200 worth of supplies. They only got 600 and they use one third of it. The answer is two hundred. I'm. St I still don't understand why this question caused so much grief in my classroom class a couple of years ago. Here you go, Brianna. Yes. So you're receiving money, but you already did it. So you're like. Counts. Uh, What's another term for deferred revenue? Unearned revenue. Unearned. Oh, okay, so it's a liability. Okay. 
Yep. So it, would it, if you've got the check, then isn't it decreased? Is it decreasing? No, oh. because you haven't done the work yet. That's what deferreds are, remember? Oh. The deferreds yes. means was... mean you received or paid cash, but no, we can record anything in terms of income or expense yet. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in that case, revenues wouldn't increase until you actually did the work, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Good question. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You gave the lawyer $1,000 in advance. And then the lawyer made a couple of phone calls during the month and, you know, maybe staked out a motel or whatever. And then he, he tells you at the end of the month, well, I, you know, I, I, I need more money. He's earned that thousand dollars. That's when you record the income for the lawyer. What do you think, Justin? What happens here? Depreciation expense. That's why I back up. I was watching my favorite old television show, Law and Order, a couple of days ago, Justin. Mm -hmm. And this guy was a brutal killer. He killed his partner in a robbery and he killed his other partner and then he killed a cop. His last name was Harp. <laughs> hmm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> we better catch Henry Harp. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, would 30 be B? Expenses increase in yes, exactly. Tell me how you got that answer. Uh, well, you credit the expense because it's increasing. No, no, we're, and... we're no, no, we're recording depreciation expense, which is the easiest adjusting entry, because it's mm -hmm. always a debit and credit to what two accounts. Uh, I mean assets and yeah, you debit depreciation expense. And you credit accumulated depreciation, which is an asset account. It just has a credit balance. So when you do that, you are increasing the expense and decreasing the asset. Um, depreciation expense is an attempt to kind of document the wear and tear on the asset. Question, Brianna? Yeah. So, okay. So you have your your equipment that you're depreciating. And so then you have this depreciation, accumulated depreciation. That, that's a, it is the normal credit balance. Yes. And is that, but it keep, does it keep increasing? Because yes. you keep accumulating? Yeah, yeah, good, good question. You buy an asset so, for $60,000 and you're depreciating at $6,000 a year. So every year you debit depreciation expense and you credit accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is called a contra account, means it has the, ap the opposite sign control, but it also means that it's married to another account. It's married to the original cost. So after the first year, that 60,000 stays under the equipment, but the accumulated depreciation is now six. So the net book value is 54. Next year, it'll go up to, it'll go down to 48 and the accumulation will go up by six. At the end yeah, of the year, yeah. makes sense? Yeah, so, but it's decreasing in its net worth, but it's not actually decreasing. I mean, it's decreasing in its net worth. Exactly, so it's not, it's yes. like the historical, it, it always stays the same, but it decreases yep. in its net worth. Okay. It yeah, it's called net book value. That's absolutely right. Same thing as net worth. Okay. Didn't we just have a question like this, Justin? I believe so. I think it was different option. Okay. But Again, what did we say we close? Revenues and expenses. Yep. Yep. The answer here would be the prepaid insurance. Um, retained earnings is not, is technically closed too, right? Retained earnings goes into your um, equity. But what you close are revenues and expenses. Okay, you never close and you never close an asset. Which account will never require an adjusting journal entry? Ah, this is a good one. Who wants to take it? Toss up, Brianna. Uh, accounts payable. Uh, exactly. You don't close accounts payable. You don't come to the end of the month and say, well, we owe $4,000.
it's the end of the month. Let's close it. We don't have to pay it. No, assets, assets, balance sheet items go on in perpetuity. They're forever. Expenses and revenues, in other words, the income statement, those are temporary accounts that must be closed. What do we have here? My goodness, did I mean? Um, can I ask you a, a question that you may not know and that's not related to this class? <laughs> sure. The Yankees, um, won the, Yankees won the World Series in 1941, four games to one over the, not a baseball question. Okay, go ahead. No, um, for 1099s, we have to send out 1099s. They have the NEC, the miscellaneous, and an INT. What's an INT? I don't know. <laughs> okay. You got a 1099 from your bank or something, huh? Well, we have to send them out to our subcontractors. But okay. And, 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 that's, and that's an initial on the form itself, huh? Yeah. he's My husband's saying there's the NEC and the INT. And I'm like, I've never saw the INT. I would imagine I, uh, INC, I'm assuming, is incorporated. Um, I, guess I, I guess I'd only be guessing. I, I really don't know. Okay. No problem. You might just that's give me a minute. I have to talk to my husband, but thank you. <laughs> that's for that's for Googling, or if you want me to research it, I'll call Joe Fletcher. I've known oh, him no. since I was three years old. He's a hotshot CPA back in New York, but okay. All right, you, you want to try this one? Continue with the class. I have to call my husband. Thank you. Okay, here we go, Justin. I think I have a wrong answer here. Mm, let's let's do this together, you. Justin. We had 500 at the beginning, right? And mm -hmm. then we bought more, so that's 2,500. And Redone. then the answer would be 3000 right? And the internal entry, debited insurance expense credit, if you can check. What was the December 31st well, balance? It would be 1000 right? Because it's saying that we have 3000 oh, at the beginning of the year. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Perfect. Again, I did not really read it. <laughs> it's crucial. You know, I just, I read, I read everything up to 2000 and stopped reading. Because I assumed it was asking for the expense. <laughs> See how you get in trouble on these questions? Yeah. Very easy. Here's a good one. Which statement's correct here? See, if we were in the classroom, this would be just part of your test. There would also be like four problems. Uh, B. B. Current liabilities or debts expected to be paid in one year. Good. Accumulated depreciation, that's not on the income statement. Current assets are not tangible. I don't know why I like these uh, year-end equity questions. <laughs> one reason I like them uh, is I'll answer my own question. You do a few of these questions, you, you start to learn how organizing the data is so important. So maybe we could walk through this. Okay. So I'm seeing we have 500. So we we start with the 500,000. Will we add right. the 600,000 to it? Yeah, that's the beginning balance. Yep. So that's a million one. And then the net income earned was 100,000. So you'd also add that? Yeah, of course. A million okay. two. So one, two, two. And then we would take off. The 15 and the 25? No, no. We you said? take off the 15, they issued more stock. So the answer to this would be 500 plus 600. That's your beginning. Income gives you another 100,000. And then the dividends declared decrease the retained earnings, which you're giving away part of the company. That's what a dividend is. And then they just issued more mm -hmm. stock. So that increases the equity. So, so it looks to me like it's a million two my ten. plus 10. Your answer is B. Okay, that makes sense. B. See, what you just did, whether you know it or not, Justin, you just did the equity statement. That's what the equity statement is. It's the beginning equity plus any new investments or stock issues. Plus income minus dividends. 
Oh boy, here's an easy one. You want to try this one? Beginning between the next cut, uh, 60,000. Do this one in three seconds. Yeah, 110,000. There you go. See? There you go. I hope Cornelia puts a lot of this, a lot of these questions on uh, the test dealing with the equity statement. Ooh, here's one we can have fun with. You ready? Mm -hmm. So I guess we need to have a piece of paper just to write them down, huh? Yeah. Okay, so they're giving you some adjusting journal entries, and the net income before these entries was 120,000, huh? Mm -hmm. So we start with that. So we take 120. What happened when we recorded the depreciation expense? It went down. So what went down? The net income it comes right exactly right. Income. What about when we accrue yeah. revenue? Uh, accrue revenue it goes up. Okay, and we use some insurance. It increases. Will decrease. Decrease rent revenue originally credited to owner. Go ahead, rent revenue earned. Uh, would that? It's revenue increase. earned. Don't, don't think about it yeah. any more than that. We we got revenue now. It's we earned it. So that'll increase uh, your net income, right? Yes. And then that'll take the last one will decrease it, the yep. salary and wages. Yeah. So if you want to do the, the math for me. Yeah. One I mean, I, 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 let's see, thirty one minus two and nine is eleven. Minus seven is four. In my head, I got a hundred and four. Is that what? Yeah, that's what I got as well. There you go. Okay. Yeah, uh, you sound like you had a little bit of hesitancy on the one about the rent revenue earned, Justin. That's your unearned. You when you received the money, you debited cash and you credited unearned revenue, which is a liability account. And now they've done some of that work, so now we can call it regular revenue. So that, so I mean, obviously it's not an option, so it wouldn't be the case. But if you, with the unearned revenue, if you debited cash, wouldn't it? It wouldn't necessarily have an effect on the net income because once you earn the revenue, you would already added it. It has no. Like, like, isn't, Go ahead. Well, so I, in my assumption would be that this 120,000 net income is including the 7,000 because when it became under in revenue, wouldn't it have been accounted for? No. When they received the cash, the entry was a debit to cash, which is an asset and credit to the liability account under in revenue. Now we come to the end of the month and someone said, you know, we had rent, uh, where, where was it here? We have maybe $100,000 in unearned revenue. We don't care what that number is, but they're telling us whatever that number was, now we've performed $7,000 worth of service. Somebody actually, oh. somebody actually occupied a couple of our apartments for a month. And only with that can we call it income. Okay. It's all about the matching principle. You okay with that one? Yeah. Okay. I'll let, are uh, you there, Brianna? Or are, you, are you hiding out a little bit? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just my kids keep screaming in the background, so I'm trying to. Good gosh. I, Good. That <laughs> child is six years old. When is he going to grow up? <laughs> when I when I have my nephew, he's uh, four. If I don't have props here, he doesn't even want to say hello to Uncle Bob. Uh, what do you think on 38, Brianna? A country voucher for cash that applies to regard the transaction. Total assets stay the same. Yeah, total assets stay the same. What we did was one, exchange one very liquid asset. Uh, we, we got rid of one liquid asset for a long-term one. All right, here we go, Brianna. Okay. Um, if they don't do the depreciation, then... See, net income is overstated and that's a crying child. Um, <laughs> and, okay. Assets would be overstated. Net income in, okay. Is it D? 
the net income would be overstated and assets would be overstated. So yes, you got that one correct. Okay. I have to go, again, but you're, I again, you're working with that um, uh, accumulated depreciation account. Which is an expense that goes on the income statement? Brianna, you want to try this one? Which is an expense? Uh, or jo Justin, I think Brianna's. Uh, yeah, she's taking she's care of her son. Uh, <laughs> the income, would it be costs? Yeah, that's an expense. Costs and goods sold. Yeah. Cost the dividends. Goes, go ahead. Dividends wouldn't appear until the stockholder equity. This yeah, the dividends have nothing to do with revenues or expenses. Dividends are not an expense. Dividend is the act of giving away part of the company. So on every dividend, Justin, you debit mm -hmm. retained earnings, which reduces the equity of the company, and you credit dividends payable or cash. Okay. No income, no expense. What's the main purpose of a year-end audit? Uh, what is the name? To render an opinion as to whether or not the statements are in compliance with GAAP. Absolutely, See? absolutely. Um, if if they if if you're auditing a company and they give you nothing but phony information and you did all your due diligence as an auditor and didn't catch it, that's not on the auditor. All the auditor can do is take the information given to them, test it for reasonableness, test it for in, with different methods, and after that, render an opinion. 42. All right, Justin, you might have to bring us home here these last eight or so. Which of the following statements is true that operating income is not a failure? Um, B. Hold on, I lost my sight here. Which is which is true? Oh, absolutely, good catch. Yeah, you're absolutely right on that. Yeah, the ca the cash flows can be totally different than the income. And you might remember, I guess it was in the first or second chapter when they were just introducing a few things. They talked about how people should be wary of companies who are showing fantastic profits without any cash flow. And that was Tesla. And it's still Tesla, I think. Although they do have a product of the future. So we'll see what happens. When do you record a net loss? Oh, my goodness. This one. C. You said C, I hope, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, here they're asking you who makes up the who determines the accounting rules? Uh, FASP, Financial FASB. Accounting Standards Board. Yeah, FASB Financial FASB Accounting there. Standards Board. It sounds like a fun group, huh? Yeah. Gross mar oh, this this question is maybe not fair. I'll ask you anyway. Gross margin less operating expenses equals what? Net operating income. Gross margin less operating income is yeah, net operating income. Yeah. We didn't really get into this yet in the course. That's the next chapter. Kind of snuck in here. Oh, here we go. The time period assumption principle. You know, you have all these principles of accounting, like the matching principle. Mm. And what's the time period assumption um, about? Uh, I'd say B. And that's something, this would be. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, you're, you're, you're close. That That's kind of dancing around it. It's really D. It, it assumes that a business goes on forever, okay? The business technically can go on forever, but the, the time period assumption is that we can always take that perpetual business and break it out into smaller chunks for purposes of anal analysis. 
like a month. Okay. Perfect. Time period. Okay. Well, here's. Yeah, I don't. I I I hope Cornelia doesn't give you too many cash flows thing because we didn't really go into it too too much. Which is not a cash flow from operations, would you think? Uh, cash yeah. What are your th- from a bank? Yes. Yes. Exactly right. The other three are as operating as they could possibly be. Mm-hmm. Okay, liquidity is how we order these things. Which one of these things is listed correctly? We're talking assets. Ooh. Okay. A is absolutely correct. Oh, no. (laughs) B. B. Cash and receivables are your most liquid, okay? So it's usually going to be cash, receivables, inventory, and then the prepaids. If you had a short-term investment in another company, for example, um, you bought uh, a 30-day bond, that might come before receivables, but we're not up to there yet. Liquidity. You ignore you ignore A because intangible assets are long term, and the other two have property and equipment and building. Brad Company sales. What was the cost of goods sold? Do you remember? How, do you remember how we get the gross margin? Oh, I wrote it down. Let me see. Yeah. Again, this is not a fair question because we didn't really go over it's, this quite yet. It's Gross margin is the same as gross profit, profit, I'd assume. Yes, yes. So sales minus cost of goods sold. So sales, sales for 20,000, 24, 19, 34, 43, 200. No, 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 no. 100. Nope, nope, nope. You're making it way too hard. We don't even want to look at the admin expenses. Cost of goods sold is simply what you paid for the items you sold. And the formula is, you read the formula correctly. Could you read oh, it again? So I just, yeah. So it's sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. So I'm using, I'm turning it around and I'm doing gross profit minus. Yeah. Gro- gross. Yeah. I see what I'm doing here. So it's 120,000 feet. There you go. There Long you go. story short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we're toward the end here. Yeah. Um, so what do we it? have access to this document? Am I going to be able to like maybe go back through it? Let me, let me um, email it to the class. Okay. Perfect. Email it to the class. Where's the journal entry report? Okay. Barn hey, maybe report. Brianna wants to take us home. Are you there, Brianna? Sort of. Right now. Right now. Oh, uh, hi, Brianna. <laughs> you want to do the last one? Uh, what and is the journal entry? <laughs> Sorry, I could number. I, I was going to give you the honor of doing the last question. Money. Okay, what is the journal entry to record borrowing money from bank lenders to be paid in five years? Okay, so you debit cash and credit notes payable. There you go. There we go. So that was our second test review. Okay. And I'm tutoring tonight if anybody wants to pop in with a question or two. How many students are going to show up for tutoring on a Friday night, you think? I'll be there. (laughs) All right, Justin, you'll be there. You'll be there with your Um, uncle, Henry Harp. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully he doesn't make it. No, 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 Um, he's he's a bad apple. (laughs) So if I make it to the tutoring, do you think we'd be able to walk through so I still have to finish the chapter four exercises. Is that something that you could maybe help me try to understand? We don't have absolutely, to, absolutely. That's what tutoring is all obviously. about. Help you with the homework. Help you with questions. Anything that's bothering you. You know what? What some students do. Um, I almost called you Henry. I'm so sorry. What some students do, Justin? They just dial into the meeting and mute themselves, and they listen. And I might interrupt them and say, "How's it going?" And they say, no, I'm fine. I'm, you know, I'm picking up some good pointers just listening. So tutoring is worthwhile. You get extra credit for it too, you know. 
All right. Do you, uh, you think that's the end of the meeting? What do you think, Justin? Are we done here? Brianna, are we done here? Yeah, I think I'm good. Thank you. Okay. You with us, Justin? No, I'm going to come out. The timer hasn't come up. Okay. I'm going to put an end to the meeting. And right. uh, you know where to find me tonight, Brianna. <laughs> Talk to you good. later. Bye-bye, guys. Okay.